us today. And I truly believe that God has a word in season for us today um, with all my heart. Why don't you say to your neighbor, God is not done with you yet. Can we give a clap offering for the Lord, please? 2020 can probably be the most infamous year of all time. How many of you guys have had a 2020 that's been up, down, sideways, right? Am I the only one to think most of us here? Has had a 2020 that we can at least say is memorable. Uh, this year, honestly, I can say that it's not what I expected. It's definitely not <laughs> what I prayed for. <laughs> Man, when we start the year, we started on a, a seven-day fast, and then, you know, we were there with our petitions, and, you know, we're there so expectant of, you know, the way that God was going to move and what, we, what he was going to say and how um, he was going to kind of lead us into this 2020. And I did not expect to go through everything that we have gone through so far. Can you guys agree with me that it's been unexpected, to say the least, super unexpected? But, you know, I think that a lot of times, even in the unexpected, one of the things that um, God does best is to be able to, I'm going to slowly do this. <laughs> I'm like following directions right now. This is all new to me, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm speaking to your camera now. Welcome <laughs> for whoever saw Folly my side for most of the time. 2020 has been a year that's been unexpected. It's definitely been a year where um, we can all probably say that we were not definitely expecting to walk through some of the things that we have walked through. But uh, I think that there is so much um, grace in what God is doing right now. You know, there's a season that you find yourself in right now now not yesterday or tomorrow there's a season that you have right now in your life and God has placed a specific grace for that specific season that you're going through right now not tomorrow not the day after right now there's a call over your life right now and I feel like there's a lot of times where we're experts at ignoring the tug of the Holy Spirit we can feel like we should do something but we neglect it Right? We, we can be experts and be like, oh, maybe, maybe it's not God. You know, maybe, maybe it's not that. But I can tell you, rest assured, that God is tugging at your heart today about something. There's something that God wants to do in your life, and all we have to do is obey. Everybody say, obey. That's all we have to do. All we have to do is obedience. Our, our pastor was preaching about it on Thanksgiving, that that is one of the prerequisites to enter into Thanksgiving, to enter into gratefulness. It's called obedience. The Bible talks about obedience so much. And if the Bible talks about it, which is God's holy word, it's important to God. It's important for us to obey his word. It's important for us to obey him in the season that we're in today. So I don't know what season you might find yourself in today. I don't know if right now you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a school teacher. Um, maybe you're watching online, you're a business person, you're a family person. Whatever season you may find yourself in today... The one word that you can rest assured that will bless you is the word obey. Obey. Whatever the cost, obey. Whatever gets tried to, you know, we have sometimes thoughts planted on the, like, the other side of like, oh, but if I obey, I'm going to lose this. Or if I, if I do what I was supposed to do, then this might happen. Obey. We cannot be fearful of men. We have to be fearful of God, awe and reverence to Jesus. You see, Jesus talked about obedience quite a lot. He talked about how everywhere that he went, there were crowds of people. And we were talking about thankfulness, about how the crowds of people, a lot of times they came to get a miracle. But then when it came time to obey, they just dipped. The process of which we go through that is God's holy will for our lives it's called sanctification. Everybody say sanctification. Sanctification starts with obedience. I need to obey what God is telling me to do today. I need to go and do what I'm supposed to do today. Not the day of tomorrow. Not two weeks from now. Today. I cannot postpone obedience if there's one thing on this earth that we should not postpone, everybody, it's obedience. If God said to do it, do it today. Don't delay another day. Don't let time pass by. Or don't let your heart deceive you. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful 
Our emotions, they're going to be up, they're going to be down. But the Bible also says that the Holy Spirit gives us something called self-control. And in self-control, my feelings will catch up to my obedience. If I obey, the emotions will follow. Self-control starts with obedience. I need to obey. Obey what God told me to do today. There's a story in the Bible about obedience. There's somebody that is used as an example for obedience. And it was Moses. One of the many, because I know there's many. I don't know if I can open up the laptop. I'm like, I don't know if I can open it or not because of the camera. But in the story of Moses, he puts 110 reasons why not to obey. Because <laughs> God meets him in a place that he found mundane, in the place where he probably did his, every, he did actually do his everyday life, right? Maybe at my job, at my school, at my house. That's where we all do our everyday life. If you go to school, you're going to do it at school, right? You spend most of your time there. If you go to work, you're going to do it there, right? But that's where God meets him. God meets him in his everyday place. But God meets Moses to put him on purpose. He didn't meet him para regañarlo. He met him there to put him on the right track. I think a lot of times we can be fearful of that. Like, oh, man. But what if, and we put so many what ifs before God. And our what ifs a lot of times are in the opposite direction. But guys, what if God blesses you for being obedient? What if today God blesses our obedience? What if today God blesses your marriage? What if today God blesses your job out of the obedience that you did? The Bible talks about how every good gift comes from above. Marlene touched a little bit on that in the word of offering. Everything that we have, every good gift comes from above. In the middle of the situation that Moses found himself in, he, can, he was honest with God. He's like, God, I don't have it all put together. I'm, I'm just a shepherd I don't have all the tools that, for what you're calling me to do. But in the process of doing that, of what God was calling him to do, God equips him. But what is the first step? Obedience. To say yes. See me here, God. I'm going to do it. What does obedience look like for you today? I want you to ask yourself that question. What does obedience look like for me today? What is something that God is telling me to do today? Something that I should not postpone, something that I know I should go into. And I know there's a lot of times that we can go into situations where we want to postpone things because they're not comfortable. But let me tell you, confrontation is a good thing. When I confront the things that have been holding me back from the presence of the Lord, God is going to bless me. God is going to work in my favor. But all I need to do is to be able to go, to just obey. In the middle of Moses' trials and all his doubts, all the things that he had in his mind, God told him, hey, what do you have in your hand? And he's like, well, I just got a stick. He's like, oh, it might not be much. I just got a stick, right? But as Moses saw what he had and then God told him, hey, let it go. Put it on the ground. What did Moses do? He obeyed. He's like, he didn't hold on to the stick. He's like, all right, here, it's yours. Then the stick turns to a snake. And Moses is like, oh, man, he's like freaking out. He's like panicking. He's like freaking out. He's like, oh, what, what's going to happen? And then God's like, don't worry about it. Grab by the tail. You'll be fine. And it so happens. What is the common denominator in, those, in that little scenario? He just obeyed. God told him, go west. He went west. Well, west, I think that's your west, <laughs> I think. God told him to go and he just did it. It was obedience that brought the blessing. And it was obedience that brought the presence of God to the people of Israel. And it's also disobedience what kept them out of the promised land. There's a danger in disobedience. Disobedience will kill our purpose. It will keep us outside of the place that God intended for us. 
Disobedience keeps us from seeing, it keeps us from believing, and it puts us in a place where we should have never been in the first place. What does obedience look like today for me? What is God telling me to do today? Is it forgiveness? Is it to step out? What does obedience look like for me today? That's the question that we can take away from the word of the Lord. What does obedience look like for me today? What can I walk into that God is telling me to walk into? Now, every time in the Bible, there's different scenarios and different stories of how obedience led to somebody's vision, led to somebody's sight. I mean, if you read the story of, of 10 leopards, it literally talks about that as they went, these guys were healed. Once again, what is the common denominator in the story? Jesus tells them, go and you will be healed. They obeyed. They listened and they did it. And I think that a lot of times um, we can listen a lot, but what are we doing with what we're listening? You know, I came to church for a long time. Yeah. And I just... I just heard. I just came and I listened. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Walk by faith and not by sight. Sí, sí, está bien. Yo lo entiendo. Amén, amén, hermano. Amén. Because I speak Spanish too. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Like, I'll, I'll walk by faith. Forgive and you'll be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will hear so many things. And I would just hear, 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 hear. But I can testify that in 2020, I actually put the word to work. I put it to work in my life, and I can sit up here and testify and share with you guys that it works, that it, re it never returns void. When the Bible says that you should forgive, let it go today. When God says that you should let go, let it go today. When the Bible says confess your sins, that you will be healed, confess your sins today. Can we hear it up for the Lord? The word of God never returns void. It will never, he'll never leave you put you in a place of shame and I think that that's the biggest uh, lie that the enemy has on the entire church of Jesus Christ that if we don't confess our sins then if we don't come to repentance if we don't confess that you know that something bad's going to happen to us that is the biggest lie I want to I want you to I want to tell you today that repentance is a good thing repentance before a holy God is a good thing that means I'm turning away just a little bit of research that I did. The word repentance is used over 600 times in the Old Testament. But th there's a specific word. Um, it's called the, it's the word sub. Everybody say sub. Sub means to turn away, turn around. Turn. In the New Testament, it's the word metanoia. The word metanoia in the New Testament literally means the exact same thing. Turn around. I did a little bit of, the, a little bit of research on this and it literally says that this was the Greek word that was used for, uh, for Greek and Roman soldiers. That when they were in line going somewhere, they would use that word metanoia to let them know to turn around. So what does repentance look like today in the 21st century? What does that look like before God? To turn around from where I was going to where he is going. To turn around to the call that he has over my life. That is manifesting obedience because the Bible tells us repent. One of the biggest things that I noticed um, uh, today, uh, sometimes even in the church, is that um, we fear those consequences of like, oh, but what if I do come out and tell them the truth? Like, what are they going to do to me? What if I do go up to this person and let them know that, hey, you know, I messed up on this. Like, what's going to happen to me? And it's because we become self-centered. We're thinking about ourselves. We are not thinking about heaven or the kingdom of anything. We're thinking about ourselves. We're selfish. You know what that tells us, guys? That there's pride. That's pride. Now, pride goes two ways. You can think really highly of yourself, or you can think really lowly of yourself. And God didn't call us to be prideful. He called us to be thankful. He called us to be good. He called us to be his holy children. He called us to be his people. Pride can go on two sides because a lot of times people have confused humility with the other side of pride. That I got to think super low of myself. No. You are made in the likeness and image of a holy God. 
You are made in his image. He handcrafted you. The Bible says in the Psalms that since you were in your mother's womb, he made you. He knit you together. That means he took his time, guys. The things that you may find quirky about you, those are the things that make God smile. The, the things that you may feel like, oh, but how can God use? That's exactly what he wants to use. That is exactly what he wants to use. Do you think Moses was looking at that staff thinking God's going to use this? And, God, and you know what's the first thing? <laughs> you know what's the first thing God tells him? I'm going to use that staff. <laughs> That's like what you overlooked is what I'm going to use. Exactly what you overlooked in your life is what I'm going to use to fulfill my purpose for your life. What am I overlooking today? Exactly what Moses did not think about. He was like, okay. This is something that is, I don't think is valuable, but it's in my hands. It's something that was given to me. I don't think it's valuable, God. How can that be valuable to you? How can you use this? This is not something that you could use. And you know what? I think that that shows all of us today that God really does think differently than all of us. He really does. His ways really are higher like his word says. And his thoughts really are greater like his word says. Amen. Can we give it up for the Lord today, guys? His thoughts are higher. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. <laughs> you know what God said in the Bible? He said that I will use the meek. The things that are overlooked, that's exactly what I'm going to use. Exactly where we least expect it. And so, and so what happens is that, be, uh, is that we do not give value to the correct part of our calling. We don't give value to the thing that God told us to do today. We don't give value to the thing that looks significant because before our eyes, this is, not, this is just a stick. Before the eyes of Moses, I assure you that he was not thinking that that stick was going to part the Red Sea. That God was going to use that stick to do something amazing. What is it in your life today that you think is insignificant? What is your stick? What is in your life that you're, you're, that you're overlooking today? I want you to search in your heart today. I want you to search deep in your heart. This is the word of the Lord for you. I want you to search deep in your heart and look at what you've been overlooking. But that's exactly what God's going to use in the next season. That's exactly what Jesus wants to do in your life. I want you to look at what's been overlooked. Because that is the God of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible went after the people that were overlooked. He went after people that nobody will give two dimes for. Jesus wants to use the thing that we don't value as the thing to explode us into the purpose and calling that he has for our lives. Ojo, it's his calling and his purpose. His call, his purpose. This is not to build our kingdom, guys. It's to build his kingdom. Can we give it up for the Lord who's been faithful? In this 2020, who's been faithful in our finances, who's been faithful in our church. The word of God returns no void. It is crafted perfectly. The, the word of God, it's so perfect. It is so well done. It is so well crafted by God himself that it would challenge us. It would challenge us. What kind of good father doesn't want to see his children happy? But you know what a good father also does? He wants to see his children grow. He wants to see his children grow. He, he wants them to de de desarrollarse. Is that, is that a term? That's Spanish. That's in Spanish. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Quieren que se desarrollen. Develop. Amen. He wants you to develop. He wants us to develop. The Bible says Paul, this guy named Paul, he was an apostle who had a radical encounter with Jesus and it changed his life forever. Paul wrote to many, many churches, and you can find them all in the New Testament, in Corinth and Thessalonica. He wrote to pastors like Timothy who were young pastors. He, he wrote many letters. And one of the things that Paul continually wrote in all of his letters was that I want you to grow. I want you to increase in the knowledge and the love and the wisdom given from above. I want you to increase in everything that God has given you. Whatever you have in your hands, I want you to multiply what I've given you in your hands. Come on, can we give it up for the Lord? I want you to multiply what I put in your hands. I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and tell him what's on your hands. What's in your hands? Whatever God places in my hands, it's automatically valuable. Whatever that is, maybe you have children right now, they're valuable. Maybe your call right now is not to go to the nations, but to go to the nation in your house. Maybe right now your calling is not to preach to 50,000 people and not to sing before people, but to be faithful with your child. 
The call over your life knows no boundaries. And I know that God has a word specifically for somebody right now. There is something you've been overlooking. There is an area of your life that you have not turned around. And the Lord is saying today, if you will repent wholeheartedly, and you will turn around, and you will come to me, then I will bless you. I will lift you up. I will tell you that I am still the Lord your God. What am I overlooking? What is it that I'm overlooking? Moses had a staff. What do you have in your hands today? What has God placed in your hands today? Who's under your care today? Who is under your care today? What responsibility do you have in your hands today? What is it? Ask yourself that question. Ask yourself, think about that. I, I want you to grasp and, and battle with that. I want you to wrestle with that because sometimes we don't want to look at it. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, I want a blessing. I want Pastor John to tell me all about the blessings of God. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to wrestle with the uncomfortable stuff. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that, Jesus. Your biggest blessing comes by preaching the word of truth, by wrestling with the things that we don't want to wrestle with. That's where the breakthrough comes. I thought like that too. I was like, Yes, amen to the blessing. But then when PJ would preach a sermon that would convict me, I'm like, I don't know about applying that word. <laughs> I'm like, that was really good. And <laughs> it's the word of truth. I'm like, I don't know about applying that one. Like, ah, because that means I got to actually do something, right? That means that it's not just head knowledge, but I actually got to act on it. Um, <laughs> but that's what a disciple looks like. A disciple follows. A disciple acts on it. A disciple doesn't just retain head knowledge. A disciple acts on what he's received. And so the word of God has a purpose. The Bible says that it has a purpose. In Isaiah 55, it says that it, has, it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent forth. When the word of God is spoken through the altar, when the word of God is said, it has a purpose. Everybody say with me, purpose. It has a purpose when it's spoken. And it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent forth. It will accomplish that purpose. But, it, but in God's love, sovereignty, mercy, kindness, and love, he lets us make a decision. In his absolute kindness and absolute sovereignty, he lets us make the decision. We have something called free will. God lets us make the decision. He says, I have said life and death before you, but here's what a good father does. Choose life. Guiding. Choose life. Choose life, and it will go well with you. It will go well with you. So I don't know, and I think that 2020 has been the year of just revealing stuff. A lot of scandals have popped up, even in the Christian church. A lot of things have popped up about X, Y, Z things. And it's kind of like the year when it's like, whoa, everything is coming to light. Did you know the Bible talks about that too? That it says that everything that was dark and hidden, it will come to light. This has been the year where we're like, oh, no, no, it's coming to light. But it's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. God brings things to light with a purpose. He doesn't just bring it to put shame or cast out or insecurities on you. No. He brings you so that you can turn around. So that you can come to repentance. Repentance. Godly repentance. The Bible says that godly sorrow produces repentance. Godly sorrow. But worldly sorrow produces death. How do I know the difference between the two? There's two people in the Bible, David and Saul. Those are two kings. You've never heard of Saul. He was the first king of Israel. Israel was after, you know, Moses. They had Joshua, then they had judges, and then comes King Saul. God knew in his infinite wisdom, why do you guys want a king? I'm your king. Why do you want other somebody else to reign over you? I reign over you. Why do you want somebody else to tell you stuff? I can speak to you. I reign over you, says the Lord. The people wanted a king. God, we want a king. We want to be like the, the nations of the earth. And they have kings. And you know what's the funny thing God warned them about that? He said, you do know that if you get a king... He's going to do this, 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 that. And that's not going to benefit you, right? Like, you, you, you're very well, well aware of that, right? God gave them a forewarning because God doesn't live in our context of time. He's eternal. He's forgetting and forever. So he tells them, guys, like, this is going to happen. He's a human. He's a king, but he's a human. And, and then so then God 
tells them, like, you guys sure you want a king? And the people are like, yeah, we want the king. God's like, okay. All right. Sure. All right, buddy. I'm going to give you a king. In comes King Saul. King Saul starts off good. Samuel, the prophet, comes, anoints him, good. And along the way, King Saul disobeyed. Along the way, King Saul had the fear of people. What will they say about me if I confess? What will they say about me if I choose to obey God? Saul had the fear of man. But because he had the fear of man, he lost everything he had. He disobeyed, and he loses everything he had. In the process of his disobedience, he has worldly sorrow. Because the prophet Samuel comes and tells him, yo, what happened? Why did you disobey? Like, how come you did this when I told you to do that? And then Saul's like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. But then he's like, hey, uh, I'm sorry, but we, we still good, right? Like, you restore me, okay? Like, I still need to get up there in front of the people, you know, because. And Samuel's like, What? I'm sure God from heaven was like, Saul, really? He's like, no, 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 but, but restore me. So that was godly sorrow because he was just thinking about himself. He was, he was being self-centered. He was thinking about himself. He wasn't thinking about the damage that he had caused to the entire kingdom of Israel by doing what he did, by disobeying God. And so the kingdom is taken away from him. But there's godly sorrow. Everybody say godly sorrow. There's godly sorrow, which is King David. King David comes in, he gets anointed uh, along Saul's life. You guys can read it in uh, 1 Kings 16 through, I believe it's 19, um, the stories of Saul and David. Uh, well, mostly David from 16 on. But King David comes in, and the Bible literally says that he is a man after God's own heart. That's what, he's, that's what it says. But King David has a fall. King David starts out really great. He was persecuted by Saul. Eventually, Saul pretty much... To himself, kind of, well, not really to himself. I think it was somebody got him, but PJ, correct me on that. <laughs> but basically, King Saul stops. Here comes David. David falls. Okay, David falls. He comes to a time where, you know, he, he messes up. He's there looking out of his palace, and then he sees Bathsheba bathing, and he's like, oh, snap. And he's like, oh, tell her to come up with me. And then, boom, he falls. David falls. And he tried to keep it hidden. He's like, okay, let me just try to cover this up. It's like, you know, and then he goes and literally tries just about every deceiving tactic of the time that you can think of to cover up his sin, to cover, to cover, to cover, to cover. Um, because that girl was married. Yeah, she was married. So he's like, ah, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? He's just trying to cover, 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 cover. And he doesn't realize that he's doing things his own way. And he doesn't realize that those were not the ways that God intended him to do things. So he just starts to cover, 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 cover. He's just thinking of himself, like, cover, 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 cover. He couldn't cover it. He covered it for a while. But like the Bible says, everything comes to light. He covered it for a while. The prophet Nathan comes to him. And God had revealed to Nathan what had happened. How many of you guys are grateful for the Nathans in your life? Amen. I'm grateful for the Nathans in my life. Um, we all need them. If you don't have a Nathan, get a Nathan. We all need them. They're special. They're sent by God. Um, but look what happens with David. David goes and Nathan tells him a story. He's like, what would you do, David, if I told you that there was a, a guy with many sheep and there was a guy with one. And the guy with many sheep took away. The only sheep that the other guy had. David, what would you do with that man? David was like, surely he must be killed. <laughs> How funny, right? And then Nathan tells him, David, you are that man. That's you. You had, a, you had plenty. David, you are that man. You took all he had. And you hid it before God. And you hurt the heart of God. Not only did you hurt the kingdom, 
but you hurt his heart. And I love the response of David because I think that's our response today as a, as a church in areas that no one knows about. The Bible says that David went and he wept before God. And he had godly repentance. He wept and wept and wept. That he wrote Psalms about it. Psalm 55, where you read the whole thing, it's, it's what David wrote to God. Repenting. David wept and wept and wept. And he said, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've ever did this, Lord. I'm sorry it ever came down to this, God. I'm so sorry. And David wept and wept and wept. And But David wasn't seeking a position. He would tell God, God, I'm not seeking a position. I'm not seeking to be seen. I'm not seeking that. I'm just seeking a restoration with you. I'm not seeking to, to be somewhere. I'm just seeking you. Can we get on our feet, JTP Church? The worship team can help us out. There's two types of repentance. Worldly repentance, which leads to death. As in the case of King Saul. And then there's godly repentance. That leads to life, as is in the case of King David. King David went before the Lord and he told God, Lord, I'm not even worthy anymore, Father. I just, I'm so sorry. I'm not worthy of to be here anymore. I'm not, I'm not clean, God. I'm not clean. I, I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt your heart. I'm sorry I hurt you up. I'm sorry I hurt your heart, Lord. I'm sorry that I ever looked away from where you were. David was not seeking a position. David was not seeking to be seen by people. David was seeking to be seen by God. It's like, Lord, I want you to see, I want you to see me, Lord, here as I am coming before your holy altar, Lord, with godly repentance, telling you, God, I'm never going to go back again. Forgive me of all my sins, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, that I ever stood against you in any way. I believe today is a perfect opportunity to tell the Lord, I'm sorry. I believe tonight that we are here on a purpose of the first step of our eternal journey with a loving God. I believe that God has called us here to his presence so that we can Repent before him. I believe that this is the day of salvation. There'll be no other day like this one. Do not delay what the Lord has spoken in your heart. And I want you to just take some time right now to, to close your eyes and to, to start talking to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is in this place. And he's, he's among us right now. He's ministering to hearts and minds. I know it. I can feel his sweet presence just moving upon us right now. 
I can feel how the Lord is healing hearts right now. I can feel that God right now is, is touching someone's heart. He's touching someone's heart right now. God didn't come here to condemn you. He didn't come here to judge you. He came here to restore you. And with every eye closed and every hand lifted to heaven, I'm just going to fearfully say this before God. Repent before the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent before the Lord. Repent before God. Repent before the Lord. Repent before the Lord. Repent before his presence. Repent before his presence. Repent. Repent before his presence. Whatever it is that, that you were holding back from God, whatever it is that you were holding captive, hidden, tucked away, in the dirt. I want you to bring it up to the Lord right now in your prayers. Say, Lord, I've been holding on to this so long. I've been, I've been holding on to this hurt so bad. And for so long, Jesus, I've been holding on to this so long. And today I want to give it to you. Today I'm going to present it to you as a holy sacrifice. Present it to you as a holy people. I will no longer turn to that again. I will no longer turn to those walks again. I will no longer turn to those walks, to those things that, that led me Lord, away from your presence and away from your kingdom, away from your palace, away from your grace, away from your glory, away, God, from your presence. I will not turn once again. I will not turn away. I will not turn away. I will not turn away from watching you, Lord, from being with you, God, from being in your presence, Holy Spirit. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Direct my life, Holy Spirit. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Direct my steps, God. Direct my walk, Holy Spirit. Direct me, Lord. God is in this place and he's doing something special right now. He's doing something special right now. He's doing something special right now. The Lord is here. 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 God's doing something special and I want us to have reverence towards the presence of the Lord and if that's you today, I want you to come forward, come to the front. We're going to be standing in social distance. If that's you today, I just want you to come forward before the Lord and to just lift up your hands to him and and just worship and tell him how much you love him and how much he means to you and how much he means to your family and to your job. I want you to tell him how much you mean to him. I want you to tell him how much he's been to you. I want you to tell him how good he's been in the middle of your circumstances, your doubts, your fears, your insecurities. I want you to tell the Lord how good he's been. I want you to tell Jesus how he is Lord of your life. And that you're not going to hold anything back from him anymore. That starting today, you are the Lord of my life. That you're not going to hold anything back from the God who has been good and faithful in your life. If that's you tonight, if that's you today, I want you to just step forward. If that's you tonight. If anybody can hear the voice of the Lord. Can we give it up for the Lord? And there's more people. And the Lord says there's more people that are holding back. I don't want you to hold back anymore. If there's something you've been holding on to for years. I want you to come to the front. If there's something you've been holding back for a long time. And I want you to come to the front right now and give it to the Lord. It's been hurting you for way too long. There's more. There's more, there's more, there's more. God's speaking to you right now. Don't hold it back. The 
This is about your freedom. This is about your relationship. It's about your relationship and your freedom. I want you to come to the front, says the Lord. And I want you to give that to me today. And I'm going to set you free like you've never seen free before. I'm going to put you in a place where you will know that I am the Lord, your God, and that no one else before me shall be your God. Come to godly repentance today in the name of Jesus. Come to the Lord. Come to the front. Come to the altar. Come to the Lord. Praise God. If there's anybody else here in the sound of my voice today who is truly repentant before God and you've been holding on to things for years, the presence of God is in this place right now to just heal you and to cover you today. But I need you to take a step of faith. I need you to to come out of your comfort zone. And the only reason why I'm standing here right now to do that is because God loves you so much. The only reason why I keep insisting is because God loves you so much that he wants you here. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. That's the only reason why I'm still standing here. It's for you. It's for you. That's the only reason why I'm still standing here. That's the only reason why I keep calling out for you. Is there anybody else in this place? Is there anybody else in this place? God says there's one more. The Lord says there's one more. There's one more. There's one more. There's one more. Last call. The word of the Lord has been spoken. And God, I thank you for your word today. Whoever came up here, Lord, I just want to pray for you. I just want to pray. The church can please stand your hands. We're going to pray together. Lord, I just pray right now for healing to come into our lives, Lord. Father, I pray right now for the release of grace. There it is. The release of grace of the Holy Spirit right now coming to free our lives in Jesus' name. And so start thanking the Lord for everything he's done in your life. Start thanking him for the things that he kept you out of, the doors that he kept hidden. Today, the Lord Jesus is here. Father God is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. And I want you to give up right now. Whatever it was, I want you to present it to the Lord right now. Here it is. Here it is. There it is. There it is. Give it to the Lord. 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 Give it to God. Give it to Jesus. He's here. Give it to God. 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 Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet Spirit of God, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. God is working, 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 God is working. God is working, 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 God is working. Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 thank you. God, thank you for the work that you're doing in our church today, God. Lord, we come before you, Lord, with holy repentance unto you, Lord. We want to obey you today, Father. We will take the next step today, Lord, to obey what you're telling us to obey, Lord to go where we need to go, Father God, and to be the people that you called us to be, Lord, your children, Lord. You called us to be people of light and not of darkness, Father. You called us to be people who are here on purpose, with a purpose, God, and we're here to do that today, Father God. Right now, I bind every single work of the enemy over my brothers and my sisters in Jesus' name. I bind every single sexual immorality. I bind every single pornography, sexual immorality in Jesus' name. I bind every single shackle of sexual immorality in the name of Jesus. Right now, broken in Jesus' name. I bind every shackle. I bind every word. Right now, spoken that was a lie over you. There's words that have been spoken over you that were lies. And you believed them until today. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. And receive the glory of God today. Receive the presence of the Holy Spirit in our service today. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is keeping you. The Lord has kept you for so long. He's kept you for so long. He's kept you for so long. And it's for a purpose. He's kept you. And you've been complaining. You've been arguing. You've been complaining. You've been complaining to people. You've been been arguing. But the Lord says, if today is the day. 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 Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Jesus. I bind the shackles of sin today in your holy name, Jesus, in your presence, God. For today, God, we are holy, God. We are a nation, God. We are a people, God, that come before you with holy repentance, Holy Spirit. And we are just going to do your will and not ours, Lord. We're done with building our kingdom. 
and we're going to build your kingdom today in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, we thank you today for you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being the agents of love, of grace, and mercy that you are. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray that you are released, Holy Spirit, just grace over our service today grace and strength over us today holy spirit father god i pray right now that the release of god is in this place right now the holy spirit is releasing a new grace in your life he's releasing a new way in your life and he's giving you right now every strength that you needed to open up your eyes and realize that what you have in your hands is valuable and that the lord will use it for his glory father in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen Hallelujah. Uh, the, the last thing we want to do, give it up for the Lord one more time. He's good. The last thing we want to do, whether you're watching us online, I'm just going to ask that everybody just please uh, keep your eyes closed. And um, if there's anybody here with us for the first time or if this was um, the first time you ever came to a Christian church, we want to invite you to the kingdom of heaven. We want to invite you to life everlasting and life everlasting is found in Jesus Christ. Uh, he died and paid the penalty for our sins so that we may have everlasting life. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news to our lives so we don't worry about what happens on the other side because we already know where we're going on the other side. God is here in this place today and I just want to ask, and I want to make an invitation to anybody today that is going to open up their hearts to Jesus who wants to reconcile with God or anything in between. I just want to give you an opportunity today that if that's you today, if you want to reconcile to God, you want to reach out to Jesus, I just want you to raise your hand at the count of three. One, two, three three that's you today raise your hand is anybody in this place anybody praise god lord i want to thank you for every person in this room i pray that you bless them i pray that you give them life i pray that you give them lord everything that they need and father we pray lord in this godly repentance that we will never again overlook what you put in our hands in jesus name amen amen and amen